A fun show. A fun show. A show fun. A fun house. Uh, that's where they have those mirrors, the wonky mirrors. Mm -hmm. Where you don't know where you're going? I don't even think I've ever been to one of those before. Really? A Never? House? A fun house? Where would you even find one of those? Uh, like the one I went to was at uh, Fear Festival. Okay, so I'm supposed to be there? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you're, never you're, been to Fear Festival? You're saying that like I, <laughs> I should go once a year to Fear Fest. No, I don't know anything about this. No, well, Fear Festival is fun. I don't know where to find these funky mirrors. I don't think I really even need to. You need As you can tell, I'm having a lot of fun already. <laughs> I don't need a fun house because I'm having maximum fun already. Right. As you can tell, you guys, everybody can see that Kohu's on the show today, mm -hmm. which is a change. Yeah, I and, posted it in the Discord. And it could go one way or the other. And we discussed this prior that... Uh, that Mo was saying in full sentences to Kovu the consequences <laughs> <laughs> if he doesn't behave himself and we're like wow okay that's a very intelligent dog you have there uh, quite the vocabulary right <laughs> but he's Mo's listening to you look at him well right now yeah Let's, uh, let's like, there will be stay. consequences for your actions if you choose to disobey. <laughs> We're like, hmm. wow. It's actually not far off from what I said. Wow. <laughs> Ultimatum. But the thing is, he looks a little bit sleepy right now. I mean, obviously, that can change in a moment's notice mm -hmm. with just the part, like the right sound. Yeah. But he, we'll or, see how it goes. Mm -hmm. We'll see. How, welcome back. Also, Otis got a haircut. Yeah. Which is. <laughs> Which he looks amazing. Quite a big deal <laughs> yeah. yesterday around here. He was <laughs> strutting around, sophisticated. Yeah. It was a lot to take in. Mm -hmm. uh, but we got to get it moving. So let's kick it off. First story here. Apparently, we have a visual. We have caught a visual on the upcoming Nothing Phone. The Nothing Phone One. We know what it's gonna look like. We know what it's gonna look like. Mm -hmm. uh, it's going to look like a bird. It comes with a bird. That's right. Well, that's a special feature. Uh, there's one. Wait, there's one more thing. You get a. What is that? A cockatoo? What, what is that bird? I have no it idea. It doesn't matter. <laughs> what do you think about this? <laughs> Just like the image of it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Uh, what do I think? I think it looks better than I expected it to look. Obviously, it's a it's a it's a real white thing going on. Mm -hmm. The top section is kind of iPhone iPhone ish. iPhone ten. iPhone e. iPhone ish. Two lenses. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just I don't know, and and also the shape of it, the overall shape, the way the curves go, right, and the flat edges. Mm -hmm. uh, that said. It's got a, a sort of cyber, sort of futuristic, sort of Blade Runner. I don't know if I need the bird. <laughs> I think that's a uh, that's also very Apple like, right? I don't know if I need the bird. That's their uh, that's their thing. <laughs> they had the ladybugs before with the no, bugs. I know. Oh, and the prey but, the, but the thing is, the yeah. thing is, I am already scarred. Hmm? Scarred. Yes. <laughs> okay, go on. What happened? I was attacked by one of these birds. <laughs> There's no way. <laughs> Don't listen. <laughs> no, I'm scarred. I have uh, preconceptions about animals and tech because of TELUS. TELUS commercials, local telco company. Mm -hmm. They use animals to market everything. It's a right. green Geico. frog. It's a color. No, 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 not Geico. No, no. I'm saying Geico. Also. No, 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 no. Because it's always a different one with this one. And they put it next to a phone, specifically. Look at mm -hmm. that. There's a penguin and an iPhone. And they're like, don't you want the iPhone? The penguin wants the iPhone. And then it's a bird, and it's a chameleon. Or as my daughter says, chameleon. <laughs> uh, anyway, so they've done it. That I think that's the exact bird they use. But I can't expect nothing to know about this. This is a local carrier. And it's a local type of promo. Shout out Saul. It's his birthday today. He says he's 22. That's Shout crazy. Been watching, been watching since he was 17. Happy birthday. That's what I try to explain to you guys. You guys are like, well, uh, oh, yes. you know, t times change. Things change. Flavors change. You used to like strawberry. Now you like vanilla. Enough time passes. Name a thing you're a fan of today, Mo, that you were just as much a fan of 10 years ago. Go ahead, Mo. Mm -hmm. That's what I thought. Um, there is no thing. 
Anyway, let's talk about this nothing phone uh, because they teased and teased and teased and people were sick of being teased and they just wanted to see it. Oh, the dogs have decided to break all the rules <laughs> and that oh. did not last long. No, we're still on the first story here <laughs> and uh, that was very ambitious of you and there's a full out battle that's already ensued I and now we will see the consequences. Because they're having so much fun. The consequences of those actions. As I'll post a video. Mo takes it into his own hands. Even though the Discord. Nothing Phone One's launch is about a, is still about a month away, the company has already begun to show what the device will look like to help generate hype. It's a little bit at a time. They're employing those old OnePlus tactics. Of course, you got Carl involved, and of course, that's what you would do because you had success in the first place. Can you deliver the same marketing um, uh, strategy success. alongside? the value for money component that made OnePlus famous. Mm -hmm. So they just give us a picture. That's what we have right now. And they say the event starts 26 days, 18 hours, 25 minutes. I'll be checking out this event. I have to say, like, based on, you, you know, my love of the teenage engineering. Yes. I have love. You do. Just a couple of normal guys. <laughs> I was wondering if you were going to bring that up today. On a normal day, talking about love, having a little conversation, <laughs> talking about love. Oh, oh man, <laughs> <laughs> we say nothing about this. We just move forward. No, we don't. They, listen, <laughs> we're filming a separate video. Very good video. Don't no goofing. Mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. looking at the camera, not you. But no goofing. I'm looking at you guys. There's what no goofing. <laughs> well, you, you never know. Okay, you never know. Uh, and Mo turns to me and he says, <laughs> just out of nowhere, out of nowhere, he says, Lou, people have died for love. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, hey, man, I said, whoa, you can't just, I'm trying to get, I'm trying to do work here. Mo's and he was, very passionate. he was sincere. The thing it was, yeah. it wasn't, he wasn't saying it in a joking manner. Yeah. And I had to... You got chills? I had to reconfigure. I had to uh, gather myself. Yeah. I needed to be gathered. Right. After that. Imagine that, guy. Somebody mm -hmm. approaches you. <laughs> Just think about it for a second. People have died for love, Lou. It's like, wow. And if people might think I'm making it up. I swear to God I am not making it up right now. No, this is true. This is true, exactly. Yeah. This is true, and you'll find out more <laughs> on the next episode of Lou Later. Uh, nothing phone looks good. Looks teenage engineering, which is good. Mm -hmm. Which is good. Because I was worried that it wasn't going to look teenage engineering enough, but I'm getting the feeling now. Mm -hmm. It is just an image. It's just the back of the phone, unfortunately. The transparent thing has followed through but in a tasteful way where they're not it's not overwhelming good job so far it's one photo mo let's not get carried away yeah. elon musk says that lucid and rivian are tra tracking towards bankruptcy mm. whoa why shots fired will mm -hmm. for sure mm. elon musk says electric vehicle start startups lucid and rivian tracking towards bankruptcy unless something changes unless during an interview with the Tesla Silicon Valley Owners Club, Tesla CEO Elon Musk said that both Lucid Motors and Rivian are trending toward bankruptcy. Keep going. What's the matter over there? Well, what are you, are you having a time over there or what? They just keep saying that. Like, these three paragraphs are exactly the same. Yeah, yeah, they're keywords. Including the title. Just keep banging on. Yeah. Unless something changes significantly, I hope they can do something, but unless they can cut their costs dramatically, they are in deep trouble and will end up in the car cemetery like every other, with the exception of Tesla and Ford. Ooh, he likes Ford. Uh huh. He likes a Ford. Mm, interesting. Interesting. Well, they say pl uh, pleasant things about each other on, on social media. Right. Right. Uh, I don't know if you saw people charging Teslas with the Ford Lightning. Oh, really? They included cool. the adapter. Yeah, that's really cool. They just quietly. They go, here's a, you know, mm -hmm. they didn't make no fanfare. No. Just people are going to see it happening on the street. They're going to be like, huh, who's charging who? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Bragging a bit. Strategy. Man. Shout out to Ford, though. Need a boost? Mm hmm. 
Need a boost? That's a little handshake, isn't it? I wonder, you know how they have like AAA? What if you run out of battery on the highway? Does AAA bring you like a, a Ford Lightning? <laughs> In the future, they yeah. will. In the future, they will. For now, it would probably be some a battery pack that can deliver 30, uh, right. 30 amp. We we have a battery bank that we can do. do such things. We do. In an upcoming video. Yeah, stay tuned. A lot of stuff turning here. In an upcoming video. Anyway, how about this? A nice little meetup with the Tesla owners of Silicon Valley. Look how happy everyone is. They're like, that's Elon. We're standing with Elon. We're taking a photo. Uh, I saw a Everyday Astronaut was back over there talking SpaceX. He's open. He's chatting. He's having uh, uh, meetings and greetings. Yeah. And it was a candid podcast, I think. the I think the reason why he thought that the Rivian companies and lucid companies are going to be bankrupt is because they make desirable cars but it's just too much money yeah you're, like you're the, the value proposition is way too high no matter how desirable they are you're just talking about business mm. you're talking about <clears throat> supply chain assembly employees efficiencies can well, hold on didn't elon do the same thing wasn't his Plan, I'm going to make a really expensive car that mm -hmm. everybody buys. But that was how many years ago? you got to be at some next spot now. Like these other newcomers who are saying, we're going to have a $40,000, $30,000. There's so many players uh -huh. now. Mm -hmm. You're not coming into a market where you're the only one with the electric vehicle. So anybody who wants an electric vehicle has to come to you. So they pay the extra. Right. That plan only The works. newcomer fee. Mm -hmm. Okay. That makes sense. Now it's so much more competitive where you put these dollars. But I got to say, I'm seeing these Rivians around. I kind of feel like I wouldn't mind though, to put right? my hands on a little Rivian. Right? I don't know about you guys. Oh, I'm about it. They so look really in the headphones. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> and me going, right? Right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you doubled down. You yeah. backed me up on it. Yeah. Goes, <laughs> you become an engine. <laughs> Couple yeah. of guys talking about love. <laughs> it's a regular day, having a regular chat, having a little conversation about love. <laughs> All right, let's get moving. Shout out Adam and shout out Professor. Thank you very much. Adobe Photoshop on the web will will be free to everyone. What? 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 Ha, ha, watch. The browser-based version of the popular photo editor will include its core features. Oh, it's a light. It's a Photoshop light. Trimmed down version, I guess. Adobe Photoshop will soon be free to all users as a basic web-based version of the full photo editing app. This free edition is currently being trialed in Canada. Whoa. Shout out, Team Canada. Shout out, Maple Syrup, Justin Bieber, and Mo. <laughs> All on the same level. <laughs> right. Maple, Bieber, Bieber Mo. Mo. Maple, Bieber, Mo. Oh, we should have a theme song. It's a new promo. It's a new promo. Mm -hmm. uh, at Tim Hortons, it's called Maple, Bieber, Mo. Mm. It's a new flavor. It's a have new, you tried it? It's yet? a new donut. Oh, the, you're talking about the, the vanilla yeah. cold? No. The brew beef. What do you think? Because is it too sweet for me? I guarantee you it's going to be too sweet for you. Okay, so then what do I have to do? I don't have to try it. But how, however, I haven't tried it, so... Oh, <laughs> so you know. just know these things. I just know these you things. You have strong intuitions I mean, dude, things. just even their iced coffee is sometimes too sweet. I know, but I order to taste. What? <laughs> you order? <laughs> <laughs> I order it to taste. So you order an iced coffee without... What is it? No, to taste it. What's going on here? You're like, can I get a few you're on a uh, plane. samples? You're on a plane. Where am I going? You should know <laughs> if you're on a plane. Uh, no, to taste the meaning just like salt on your food, you would say how much sugar you want. And if I order iced coffee from them, okay. I say I want half or less or just a little bit of sugar. Okay. Or none usually, but... Right, you usually go none. You right? get where I'm going. Mm -hmm. You can have the cold brew with none, but I doubt you can have Bieber's drink with none. I don't think so. Because he's got a special concoction. Maybe uh -huh. you know. Did you do it? No. Okay. But have you ever put salt in your coffee? That's oh. like a salted caramel type of situation? No, just like a really minor pinch. 
I, I'll do it. Is this it. a game changer, Will? I'll do yeah, it. Yeah, I do it every time. I'll do it. Whoa, every time? I'll do it. Yeah, okay. at home. I'll do it. Well, we got to do this. Now we got to have the beebs and we got to put the <laughs> pinch of salt in the coffee. I'll it's do it. It's supposed to just um, neutralize the bitterness. <laughs> That's what I heard. What's so funny, Lou? What do you, I think, what so do you me want? in the chat said, I've never heard anyone order to taste. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to try it in the drive thru and go, I'd like to order coffee to taste. <laughs> They're like, uh, yeah. Um, listen, salt is a magic trick in many cases in small amounts where you least Very expect small it. Amount, yeah. uh, oatmeal is another one. A lot of people don't realize when you make oatmeal, you have a little bit of salt in it. Not a lot, just a little bit. Uh, the stripped down browser version of the popular photo editor will give more users access to the core features of Photoshop when the web version launched to subscribers in October. It was positioned as a collaboration tool for artists to share an image with others so they could make small edits or add annotations. Adobe has since expanded its functionality and added the ability to create a new document from the web instead of having to upload one from the full desktop app. So it is stripped down. I don't know exactly what's missing which tools they would keep from you but this is what's happening now it's the freemium model it's like the games it's the fortnights and so forth you gotta let me use the thing and then i get hooked and then i'm doing business and then i'm living life and then i say to myself you know what i'm gonna pay a little extra for some of these other things for a little extra because even you you're doing a thumbnail here and there mm -hmm. and then you say to yourself could my life be easier if i just paid adobe some money mm -hmm. And Adobe says yes. Yes, of course. We'll happily take your money. And you pay them. Uh, <laughs> shout out Reggie, who says, Uganda and 20 trillion in gold. Cool. Oh, okay. <laughs> Did you say cool? Yeah. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> Instagram will start nudging teens away from content they continuously browse through. It's meant to keep teens from dwelling on a particular topic. Ooh, you're ruminating too much. Ruminating. Don't do that, Mo. It's time to move on. Why would that be a negative thing? I don't understand. Uh, let's say, for example, somebody keeps looking at uh, some some sort of topic that leads in a particular direction. Like uh, uh, the individual is a 13-year-old girl who keeps looking at anorexic content. Okay. And they go, oh, this is... Hmm. Let's suggest something else. Because algorithms don't have feelings. No. They just want to keep you there longer. They don't have feelings, so they would reinforce and keep mm. spitting more of that at you. Now, I don't even know what their stance is on that type of content. They probably try to remove it, but like sometimes algorithms are outpacing any type of moderation where you would just have too much of it to compete with, mm -hmm. and all of a sudden you're getting fed uh, something negative. I just came up with an example off the top of my head, but it could be other things. You never know. After Instagram announced a new initiative meant to nudge teen users away from harmful content last year, the platform says it's finally rolling out the feature in the U.S., U.K., Ireland, Canada, Australia, and New Zealand. By the way, I think some might be a little worried about this, saying, well, who is Instagram to tell me? Some people could be saying, so Instagram is my parent now? Yeah. Instagram knows the right way? Oh, you know what else Instagram knows? Uh, what to sell me. Oh, and they know that How to well, charge actually. for an ad. Yeah. Mm, this is much healthier for you. Right. It's uh, it's not very fair. It's a fine line yeah. for them to be in control with them having the keys to the car. Uh, Instagram says the feature is designed to encourage teens to discover something new and exclude certain topics that may be associated with appearance comparison. Hmm. It's kind okay. of in the same neighborhood as what I was saying. Right. As shown in an image of the feature, users will receive a notification that prompts them to choose what to explore next with a variety of posts they can choose from instead. So That's tries to cool. get you into other topics. And it's a gentle nudge that they did. But you know, Will, they have to select what those other contents are. And they could nudge things that they want to nudge for a variety of reasons, including commerce. Mo, go ahead. I mean, I'm a big fan of Instagram selling me stuff. So I might not be the right guy. <laughs> Because I look forward to Instagram ads. You They're like the ads. so good. <laughs> They're way more fun than most of the posts that get fed on. Uh, I agree. In my feed. We want to make sure people feel good about the time that they spend on Instagram. This is a way to softly encourage that. Adam Masseri, the head of Instagram, said in an interview with CBS Mornings, no matter what topic you're going deep into, if you're going particularly deep, we will let you know and suggest some other topics. Go ahead on to the next one there, Will. 
Microsoft's Internet Explorer is dead. Ooh, unfortunate. R.I.P. Or unfortunate, because honestly, I didn't use it that much. No. Obviously, there was a period of time before Mo was born that I was clickety-clacking on that browser. However, shortly after, you had the likes of the Firefox and eventually Chrome, and mm -hmm. on Mac, Net you had Safari. What about Netscape well, Navigator? Nets Netscape was I was using before Internet Explorer, actually. Yeah. Classic. Uh, the tech giant Microsoft has retired the Internet Explorer web browser as of Wednesday. The ubiquitous blue and white E, sometimes featuring a gold band, will be disappearing from computers around the world. And the Internet, at least some of it, is in mourning. Some of the Internet is upset about this. I don't know who. Uh, I think it's more of just a nostalgia mm -hmm. thing in general. This idea. Symbol. The, uh, yeah, I mean, that symbol, you look at that uh, icon. Damn. Damn. It's got to mean something to you. You saw it a lot at one point in time. For many, it was probably their first gateway into the internet, into a place other than their own lives. The gateway drug. You could call it such a thing <laughs> if you, uh, as you please, mm. only order it to taste. Many online grew nostalgic about the web browser that was launched in 1995. 95? I was 10. I Damn. was one. I told you, see? Mm -hmm. Well, that was when it was launched. But what was your first web browser? Do you recall, Mo? Well, yeah, this. Oh, Internet Explorer, because yeah. it was pre-installed. Yeah. yeah. 27 uh, years of service. Well, listen, you got to retire it. They got new products now. <laughs> yeah. Like they, they, they moved away from it a long time ago. I guess they were just sort of supporting it. But Edge has been there for a while, since 2015. Faster, more secure, more modern browsing experience than Internet Explorer. Um, so yeah, there's going to be an IE mode in, in, in edge. There is an IE mode in edge. If for whatever reason you see it as being beneficial to keep the dream alive. Uh, how about this partnership MLS and Apple coming 2023 Apple increases it's a sports connection here because I was watching those games and I never spoke about this on the show, but I was watching their production of a Blue Jays game because they baseball. did they did Friday Night Baseball was mm -hmm. they announced it at their previous keynote and then there was this one game on and people started texting me where am, where do I watch the Jays game right. tonight mm. they were angry at me like as if I had done something that's a joke uh, they were angry because they couldn't <laughs> find it and they thought I might know where where how to deal with it and the truth was it was uh, there you know you had to basically watch it on a mobile device unless you had an Apple TV. That was kind of how it broke down. And so a lot of people end up watching on their phone. You can't really appreciate it as much if you're used to watching on the TV. But I have an Apple TV, so I was watching the production on my TV, and it was free. And it was their production team, Apple's production team, so not the usual commentators that you'd be used to having and uh, not the usual production techniques. In other words, the cameras and the... All of a sudden, they had those um, Megalodon units, so they were getting really close to the player's handheld. Oh, wow. They were in the batter's box before. It was like it was like a movie, sort of. I don't know that everybody would, would appreciate it, but my kids, I, I was explaining to them what's going on. They're like, damn, it was intimate. And this is Apple's doing? Well, that was their production. That was the production of this particular that particular wow. game. Um, and then other things, little tidbits, like, for example percentages and likelihoods in game so like the batter would be up and then it would be live live percentages of his likelihood to hit a base hit his likelihood to strike out his likelihood Whoa. and statistics show like in percentage base things so it this was is, so cool to watch yeah a level of information that like but a lot of people were too pissed to begin with because they didn't like the commentary and also the sound mix with spatial audio with the uh, with the uh, crowd the and stuff. Yes. <laughs> Did oh you God. try it? So it's really immersive is what you're saying. I, w I thought there were some really cool elements about it. I agreed with the commentary. It's hard, man, to like mm -hmm. hire people that are not, don't normally broadcast these teams. Okay. You need a, so I actually, believe it or not, YouTube previously had the rights to some MLB games. And they uh, asked me to go down when they were doing their production from the Rogers Center. Okay. And I actually went in the booth and took part in the production. I actually did a little bit of commentary myself. But the problem is it's a traveling production team. Like they go from city to city for each promo. Mm -hmm. 
And so they're not intimately involved with any one singular team. So they can't really report on it the way that your local broadcaster does. Right. They know everybody intimately. Mm -hmm. They know every statistic. They know every at bat. They know. So that's the tough part to compensate for. But the other elements of the production were impressive to me, other than the fact that for many people, they didn't get to see it on a big screen and mm -hmm. therefore probably couldn't appreciate some of these production improvements. But anyway, leaning into sports seems to be uh, an initiative for Apple. Sports matter to people. It's one of those, from a content perspective, we were talking previously about uh, cricket and how... With uh, Disney, right? Uh, who was it who backed out? Amazon backed out. They were talking some nutty numbers. No, no, no. Uh, Disney uh, asked for uh, to make a deal with cricket and cricket yeah. said no. Yeah, no, no. It was a bidding war. You had uh, Reliance and Disney and Amazon in, oh, wow. in, in India, it was it was it was a whole um, it was a, a, a massive uh, ordeal auction sort yeah. of where I don't remember the figure. I don't think Will remembers the figure. But I think this is like a like billion dollars for the the rights to these games, maybe more. I don't even remember. It was nutty. Yeah, it was nutty what this carried with it. Mm -hmm. uh, but. Apple continues to get into the content business, services business. I think recognizing that like there's a lot of money to be made and the yeah. margins are great and uh, it, ke it keeps people in your ecosystem. And retention. More. Because a game is every week, right? With baseball, at least. They, they are only doing Friday nights right now. Right. Yeah. So if I'm opening up an app, whatever the app is, once a week. $7.7 .7 billion is the battle for the cricket rights. Really? Yeah. IPL media deal, Disney, Sony, and other contenders. June 12th, India auction. June 12th, what's today? Is this because everybody, like I know Netflix has been really trying to get into the Indian market. Is this just everybody trying to get into the Indian market? Like if you can be the first. Uh, well, it's, it's, it's about all the other business opportunities that come from it. So it's like, uh, particularly Reliance and Amazon, they're competing on everything in India, not just content, mm -hmm. where you're going to buy things, right. e-commerce, mm -hmm. other subscriptions like Prime and things like that. And so I think there's probably, um, when they're trying to calculate margin potential, they could say to themselves, well, if we get the cricket and we get people onto our sites and services, we can monetize them in all this variety of ways. Right. Try to turn that 7.7 .7 billion, mm -hmm. try to get it back. Right. The latest I heard about Bezos, though, is he thought that the it was too much, getting too high, that they weren't going to be able to make it back mm -hmm. and was possibly bailing out. Oh, here we go. Somebody says the deal closed 6.2 million yesterday is what the New York Times said. I presume he means 6.2 billion because we were talking 7.7. .7. And who, who won? Who won? Who got I assume he's talking about cricket and not uh, this MLS deal. Or maybe he's talking about this. No, $6 million ain't getting you nothing. No I don't way. Know. He must have meant billion. Anyway, this is a 10-year deal. MLS and Apple. Every MLS and Leagues Cup match. Wow. Every match. One place for everything. No need for traditional pay TV bundle. Fans get every live match by subscribing to the new MLS streaming service available exclusively through Apple TV. Wow. That's a bigger deal than I thought. But so, it's, uh, it's not free, is it? No. No, no, no. It'll, okay. co it, it'll cost you, but you can't get it anywhere else. Hmm. MLS streaming service, it's not like it's available on Apple TV and elsewhere. Mm -hmm. You have to have Apple TV to get the MLS streaming service. Otherwise, you're stuck having to figure it out on cable. But if you're a super fan and you want to watch all the games, then you got to go through Apple. It's an interesting deal. Now, oh, by the way, it doesn't mean Apple hardware specifically. Just the Apple TV app. Right which exists also on Amazon Fire TV, Roku devices, and other smart TVs directly built in. Uh, BMW is testing iX electric SUV with 600 miles of range thanks to new battery chemistry. You love the new battery chemistry conversation mm -hmm. because you're always keeping tabs on what's next in EVs because of your investments. Well, also because I want an EV and it's just battery not possible tech. for me without much larger range. Mm -hmm. So battery needs to improve. Mm -hmm. Mo said it. He's looking at you, Elon, and others. <laughs> yeah. Battery needs to improve. You heard it here. Uh, okay, so what's up with this chemistry? Let's see it. BMW is going to be testing iX SUV 600 miles. I'll take it. 
I'll take it. Previously reported on one when it did something similar with Tesla Model S, replacing its battery pack and claiming to achieve 752. Ah, so this company goes in, replaces battery packs and says, see, look what we can do. New battery tech, same car, different battery. Look at the improvements. At the time, we were cautiously skeptical since one didn't release any detail about the chemistry of its Gemini battery, claiming to have a much higher energy density. Project was not in partnership with Tesla and clearly meant to create hype. <clears throat> now they're back integrating Gemini battery in an existing electric vehicle, and there are still not many details about the chemistry, but at least it's in direct partnership with the automaker in question, in this case, BMW. Our next energy one uh, has, has signed an agreement with BMW Group to incorporate one's Gemini dual chemistry battery technology into BMW iX all electric sports activity vehicle. One's unique long range Gemini technology reduces lithium use by 20% while reducing graphite use by 60% and minimizing the use of nickel and cobalt in doing so. One is creating more sustainable energy storage technology that can significantly reduce environmental impact. So they go, we're better. We got range, we got BMW, and we got the environment on our side. And Mo says, mm -hmm. give me better batteries. Yeah. <laughs> That's what Mo says. Is it 600 miles. What's that kilometers? Is that? Oh, just under a thousand. Wow. Yeah, that's a real, that's the real one. That's the real one you want. Wow. That's a big deal because now you're outperforming most, uh, most gasoline vehicles. vehicles. Yeah. yeah. Did you say ice on this show? <laughs> what? You guys don't say ice. Ice? Like uh, in what context? Like ice vehicles. Like gas. Internal, internal combustion engine. Oh. He, he said it because like that was his, <laughs> you know what he's doing. <laughs> it's actually the first time I've ever heard of that. Really? But you read Electrek? They constantly say that. Do they? Yeah, but Mo has like upgraded his analyst status by using mm -hmm. the term ICE. Yeah. Good, Good for call. you, Mo. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Uh, Ford recalls 2.9 million vehicles that may roll away while in park. Not good. Not good. Hopefully not lightning. Elon said Ford's going to be around with Tesla. They're the only ones. So long as they don't roll away. Ford Motor Co, Co, uh, Co. is recalling 2.9 million vehicles. A recall affects Ford C-Max vehicles from model year 2013 to 18. Edges from 15 to 18. Escapes from 13 to 19, Fusions 13 to 16, and Transit Connect 13 to 21. Ooh, that's all of them. The defect is caused by a part degrading or detaching, preventing the vehicle from shifting into the intended gear. Ford says it's aware of four alleged injuries and six allegations of property damage due to the problem. So imagine that. You're just in park. All of a sudden, the car's moving. That's no good. Ford estimates only 1% of vehicles recalled will have the defect, so it's not affecting all of them, but they got to do it just to be safe. Good luck with that Ford. Uh, another, oh, also Mustang Mach-E's. Yeah. Okay, so we have multiple uh, recalls here. This has to do with battery safety issues on 49,000 Mustang Mach-E's. EV could fail to start or become immobile while in motion due to a battery malfunction. That's not ideal. 50,000 is... Uh, Quite a few, I guess, as far as Mach-E's are concerned, is a new vehicle on the road. Uh, according to the recall, the malfunction involves potential overheating of the vehicle's battery high-voltage contactors, which can lead the vehicle to fail to start or lose power while in motion. That's no good. I don't wanna, I, I, fail to start is one thing, okay? I'll figure something else out. Right. Lose power while you're in the, on the highway. Ooh, creepy. What, what happens? Does the vehicle just come to a stop or? Like yeah. Obviously. But. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Man, I mean, crazy. I think it would be relatively gradual because if if you lose power completely, you're still rolling. Mm -hmm. I mean, you you would have mechanical braking and such. Ford says 48,924 Mustang Mach-E vehicles sold in the U.S. are affected by the problem. Nearly half of the estimate. There you go. So that gives you an idea. 50,000 is a lot when it comes to Mach-E's because there's only 100,000 of them produced Whoa. Uh, during, during that time. Which time is that? Uh, 2021 to... Vehicles built between May 2020 and May 2022. So the two years that it's been around, basically, is like 100,000 of them, I guess. Hmm. And they were made in Mexico. A spokesperson said the recall has also been filed with the National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, though it has yet to be posted on the agency's website. So eventually everyone's going to get that notice. And uh, hopefully go get your Mustangs. There's a lot up. of them. I, they're the, probably the most common EV vehicles I see. Other than Tesla's. Other than Teslas, yes, mm -hmm. you're right. Teslas are everywhere. Oh, Teslas. Chev Chevy is auctioning off a Corvette NFT. Hmm. And the winning bid bidder gets the car too, minted green. 
Hmm. What's your NFT meter today, Will? Uh, yeah. it's, it's lower. It's low, right? Yeah. Man, Ooh, I Probably a one. I, I need to hear those. Oh, my God. Well, because crypto is just a nightmare. It's devastating. In and of itself. How about the HelloFresh ad on the right and the green from the lime matching up so perfectly with the color <laughs> of the car? Yeah. That's unexpected. Well, the car is cool. Maybe the NFT is cool, but this is like too little, too late. I don't know. Maybe NFTs are going to come just marching back. It's possible, but NFT feels low right now. And I'm, I don't know. I, I don't have Google Trends in front of me, but I just feel like it's a bit soft. Mm. But they're going to do it nonetheless, and they're going to spice it up with a Z06 uh, to, to make it even better. Uh, the NFT depicts a lime green Corvette Z06 blasting through a cyberpunk landscape. It was created by artist Nick Sulo, who goes by... X Sulo online. The upcoming auction pairs his NFT with a custom painted 2023 Corvette Z06 color matched to the art. Well, that's kind of a cool crossover, I guess. Nothing wrong with that. So here's the NFT. And uh, Will refuses to sign into Instagram, but it's <laughs> fine. That's the NFT. Cyberpunk backdrop, lime green, Corvette commissioned. I mean, I like the artist getting paid. Yeah, I, I like this artist art has too. cool stuff over here. Mm hmm. So we'll go for that. Very NFT. And now we got to deal with GM. <laughs> so maybe that's how they're cool because we're like, hey, GM, you, you linked up with this guy. That's pretty cool of you that you paid him some money. Uh, but I still, uh, I mean, they, they, they've, they've also enhanced the deal a little bit by giving away the car completely, I guess. I wonder how much this auction will go for. It's going to be held between June 20th and 24th and bids will only be accepted in Ethereum. Sure. Proceeds will go to Donors Choose Education Charity. Okay. Yeah, cool. Nice Corvette. I like it. Uh, Michael says, I will believe in NFT technology when I can mint my driver's license as a one of one and load it into Google Pay and Apple Pay. People want utility. Mm -hmm. They want convenience, utility, and then they believe. That's fine. GM will officially reveal Chevy Blazer EV on July 18th. Man, automotive has been kickstarted. It's big so time exciting. by EV stuff. They're like, we got this one in EV and that one in EV and this one in EV. Uh, <laughs> Sonic says, do you want to take a break? <laughs> <laughs> we were actually going to take a break. Yeah, actually. I knew that you were close. Yeah. And Sonic also knew that you were close. And they were just <laughs> trying to help you out there, Will, because they're part of the community, which is incredibly helpful mm -hmm. to us and one another mm -hmm. here on CNN+. Plus. Oh, <laughs> I just saw his finger move over top, like near the button. He was kind of anticipating that I right. might drop it. And then, <laughs> so I had to follow through. The electric blazer goes on sale in, in uh, 2023. What do you guys think? Okay, let's have a little one-two punch. <clears throat> Here is your electric blazer. Oh, I like this. Kind of like the Mach-E. It is kind yeah. of like the Mach-E. The, the, the shape and, and, and the utility of it. It's obviously an SUV. Tapers off near the back. Mm -hmm. Got some haunches back there. I always like the two tone. Mm -hmm. Okay, like with the A and B pillars. There you go. And then they kept the grill. Yeah. Mm hmm. That's no, but like it has the light coming across. Now that's an EV trend, right? You yeah, have the straight yeah. light that goes all the way across, <laughs> and even lights up the logo. In this case, mm -hmm. that's the SS model. So that's going to be your performance model, I presume. That'll maybe be the first one that they ship. Uh, twenty twenty four Blazer EV proper reveal July eighteenth. Uh, the automaker has said it aims for the Equinox EV to start at 30000 It has yet to set similar pricing expectations for the Blazer. 30 Gs would be uh, quite quite a number. 30000 for that? Wow, that's really cheap. Well, that would be a number to hit, wouldn't it? Mm -hmm. Compact midsize SUVs. Blazer EV is also expected to make uh, official debut later this year with the SS Performance model. Built on GM's Ultium battery and powertrain platform, which will serve as a foundation for the automaker's next generation of EVs. Um, the gas-powered Equinox was rated 10th most popular SUV in 2021 by Kelly Blue Book. So yeah, you bring the EV version. Oh, there you go. 2022 Blazer starts at 33400 Goes up to 36100 with all-wheel drive. Mm. Not I don't bad. know, man. If they can hit Not certain... Bad. If they can hit certain price points... Well, they're talking about the current one right yeah they're talking about the current one but they're saying that they want to replicate it with the ev version so mm -hmm. 30 is the target if they can do it they're they're gonna sell some no yeah. no doubt about it you want to take a break let's do that we'll be right back
Today we're sponsored by Stitch Fix. Here's how it works. Get a better style without a tremendous amount of effort. Actually, get yourself a designer, why don't you? Get yourself a, uh, what do they call it? A stylist, why don't you? Mm -hmm. Maybe not a designer, a stylist. That's the word I was looking for. <laughs> right. That they can pick from all the designers that would be suitable for you. They know what looks good. And your body type. Right. <laughs> I was like, don't you dare comment <laughs> on my body type. Don't you dare suggest such a thing. Here's how it works, okay? You tell them about your style. You get the pieces picked for you. Their stylists send out pieces that will reflect your style based on your quiz. And, of course, your sizing and so forth. And then you get it sent out. You only pay for whatever it is that you keep. You get a whole new look going on. You can pick like roughly what your style is, and then maybe they get you, they'll send you something you, you might not have picked on your own. But then you try it on at your house, and you're like, you know what? Damn! I might be able to pull this off right here, mm -hmm. right here. Here's some of the brands that they can pick from. Uh, I think you recognize plenty of these huge uh, names. Yeah, huge names. Levi's, Nike. Go Vans. ahead, Mo. Go ahead, Mo. You let them know. Under Armour, North Face. Thousand plus brands and styles. Uh, women's sizes extra small to 3X and men's sizes extra small to 3XL, including big and tall. And kids' sizes. Everybody can sign up. Everybody can get the style improvement. And look good. Courtesy of Stitch Fix. It's easy and fun to get started. First, take a few minutes to set up your Stitch Fix style profile. Answer a few questions about what you like to wear, what you don't, and how open you are to try new styles. Stitch Fix will send you five pieces to try at home, keep what you love, send back what you don't. Shipping, returns, and exchanges are easy and free. There's also no subscription. Try once and set up automatic deliveries. There are no hidden fees ever. Sign up today at stitchfix.com slash lulater to get $20 off your first purchase. That's stitchfix.com dot com slash lou later to get twenty dollars off your first purchase limited time offer purchase within two days of sign up we're also sponsored by honey searching the internet for the best coupons so you don't have to you don't have time for that mo yeah thirty thousand plus sites all you do is add it to chrome it is free look at all the reviews on the chrome store the next thing you know you're checking out at the regular site where you might do do your shopping do mm -hmm. your weekly shopping on a site mm -hmm. boom Look what you saved. You're in the cart. You don't nice. take any extra steps. And, it, and Honey goes, oh, you're doing a little shopping, are you? We're going to go take a peek and see if you're spending too much money. You know, you hate to miss out when there's a deal. Yeah. You don't want to miss out when there's a deal. You don't want to be the guy that paid mm -hmm. the extra. There was a deal the whole time. And you had no idea. 30,000 plus stores. It could be ordering pizza. It could be picking up shoes, booking travel. They'll look for the coupons when you shop on thousands of sites and then it gets applied automatically. You know about it. You heard about it. Add Honey. It's free. I got a few Brixton hats, as you can tell. It was super easy to use. During the checkout page, all I did was click once to apply the coupon and that's it. Save 50 bucks. Done. Honey doesn't just work on your desktop. It works on your iPhone as well. Just activate it on Safari and on your phone and save on the go. If you don't have Honey, you can be missing out on deals. And by getting it, you'll be doing yourself a favor and supporting this show. Get Honey for free at joinhoney.com slash lulater. That's joinhoney.com slash lulater. Go check it out. China says it may have detected signals from alien civilizations. I love this transition from the break. I love the way you organized that break so we could come right back to alien civilizations having sent signals to China. Perfect. <laughs> by the way, we're looking at this image and... Uh, you're what having uh, you're having golden eye flashbacks. Yeah, and I'm curious. This is called China's Sky Eye. It's a it is a telescope, a giant oh, okay. telescope. How is that a telescope? How does that work? You're asking for a, 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 a little science class over here. You came to the wrong place. <laughs> came to the wrong place. Okay. Uh, China said it's a giant sky eye telescope may have picked up signs of alien civilizations, according to a report by the state backed science and technology daily, which then appeared to have deleted the report and posts about the discovery carries the narrow band electromagnetic signals detected by sky eye, the world's largest ah, radio telescope Well, mm. radio telescope differ from previous ones. So it's kind of like a dish. Differ from previous ones captured, and the team is further investigating them. The report said, citing Shang Tongji, chief scientist of extraterrestrial civilization search, 
team co-founded by Beijing Normal University. <laughs> what? Where do you go to school? Beijing Normal University. Normal? Yeah, I go to the normal one. How about you? The National Astronomical Observatory of the Chinese Academy of Sciences and the University of California, Berkeley. It isn't clear why the report was apparently removed from the website of the Science and Technology Daily, the official newspaper of China's Science and Technology Ministry, though the news had already started trending on social network Weibo and was picked up by other media outlets, including state-run ones and including Bloomberg, where we happen to be rebroadcasting it here on Tulu later for all of you. Mm. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's extraterrestrials out there, right? <laughs> obviously. Obviously. Mm -hmm. And it's only a matter of time, obviously. And if we, if we had an enormous radio telescope, we'd be chatting it up too, wouldn't we? I'm guessing it would just be audio, right? That's right. It's just like an alien Contact. fart or something. Contact. Yeah. Jodie Foster. Great movie. The Joker sequel will be a musical starring Joaquin Phoenix and Lady Gaga. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> it will not. No, thank you. No. <laughs> it will be no such thing. Will, you better According stop it. According to the Hollywood Reporter. You better stop it right now. <laughs> okay. You better stop this fiasco. Why? Who? Why? Who's asking for this? Guys. What? What's going on? Here? Okay, well, yeah. Lady Gaga did an, a, another movie, right? What was that one with uh, Bradley Cooper? It was a musical? A, a Star is Born. I don't know if it was a musical, but it was no, it like... was a movie. What is a musical? What does it take like what to qualifies? constitute as a musical? How many songs? Favorite musical? Some Disney <laughs> movies are musicals. Right. Yeah. What is a joke or musical, Will? What well, is it? It means they're going to break out in song in like six. Yeah. No, they're not. <laughs> it, I mean, if they want to call themselves a musical, they're going to have to. No, they're not. They're not mm. going to, they're not doing that. Do you have a favorite musical? <laughs> Tell me a musical that I've doesn't do Can so you stop passionate. saying the word musical to me? <laughs> you get punched. Lady Gaga might be the latest star to enter the DC world of superheroes and villains as she circles the role of Harley Quinn for the upcoming Joker sequel. According to The Hollywood Reporter, Gaga is in talks to play the Joker's sidekick and love interest alongside Joaquin Phoenix in the second movie. According to the report, Gaga's Quinn would be a completely different version from Margot Robbie's incarnation in the Suicide Squad franchise, fitting into the format of the first Joker movie that saw Phoenix play the Joker inside his own universe separate from other DC characters. Director Todd Phillips revealed on social media the working title for the sequel, Joker Folle à Deux, which references a psychiatric syndrome where two people share a psychosis or delusional disorder. Okay, that's fine. Gaga may seem like an unusual casting choice for the role of Harley Quinn, but THR, THR also shared that the sequel will be a musical. It's only one site. If it goes that ahead, says. it won't be the first time a character from the Joker's world has been played by multiple people. Both Phoenix and Jared Leto have played the title role. Uh, uh, <laughs> no. I mean, singing, there might be singing, but the whole movie, the sequel to Joker can't be a musical, the whole movie. Why well, not? <laughs> He's so you're upset the, that you're asking him this question. Yeah, I'm going to get punched. <laughs> yeah. Um, if somebody wants me to say Joaquin. Yeah, what did you say? Jow Queen. <laughs> Listen to this noise. This is Don't me. Stop. This is me when you make a musical. <laughs> That's me gripping my mic tightly. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, they worked together on A Star is Born. Yeah. Uh, I see. You really don't want this to happen. Well, I can uh, tell. Well, whatever. Whatever. <laughs> He's not going to watch it. Anyways. Yeah, whatever. Uh, my opinion. Yeah, whatever. Whatever. I just, I don't know. So you guys tell me. You tell me in the comments. Is, there, is this what you need in life? Is this what you're looking for? Maybe I shouldn't judge things so off the bat, so like that. Nah, you're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you for that. Stop <laughs> with the... <laughs> 
Voice mod uses AI to transform your voice into Morgan Freeman, obviously. Astronauts and more. AI Voices enters beta today. I can I have this? Yeah, I yeah, believe so. AI Voices technology. You can transform your voice in real time. Sound like an iconic movie actor with the Morgan voice. <laughs> That's a good one. That's the best one easily, but that was really good. That's live? The possibilities are infinite. Sign up for the voice mod beta and try our AI voices today. Yeah. Okay. Isn't that so cool? Where am I getting it though? What am I doing? <laughs> That's so specific. What am I doing? <laughs> so you want it. You think well, it's I just cool. don't know where do I get it. What am I in? What is this software? From or what I understand, this is actually a pretty old software, but this new AI Morgan Freeman thing is uh, like a new feature. Voice mod, a popular real-time voice changer, is starting to use artificial intelligence. Voice mod has been transforming voices for years thanks to classic sound design techniques, but these new voice effects combine AI too. The Morgan voice, as voice mod calls it, is particularly impressive, allowing you to pretend to be the famous movie star or simply a polished voice actor. The new pilot voice is also a lot of fun with sound effects that really make it sound like you're piloting an aircraft. Oh, okay. We so, can try it here. So we can just, I yeah, can set something yeah up. set it up on your thing and let me... Uh, oh, it works on Discord. Let me be Morgan real quick. Look at that. Let, let, let me be Morgan real quick. This is going to be fun. Yeah. yeah. Realistic synthetic synthetic voices are getting even more impressive as the years roll by. While AI, vo AI voices have been a novelty in the past, tools like resemble.ai and respeecher have demonstrated the potential for content creators letting editors use voice clones to edit spoken word recordings cool targeted at streamers and content creators Let's, we'll give you a demo real soon all right squid game reality series coming to netflix with biggest cash prize in tv history streaming home to the hit survival drama announced squid game the challenge which will have 456 players in real life competition in a series of games for a record-setting $4.56 million purse. Uh, obviously, uh, the show, wildly successful. Billions of views on Netflix. Will watch it, watched it and loved it. Mo made it through half an episode. <laughs> uh, however, it's near and dear to a lot of people, as is anything that's wildly popular and successful. It's near and dear to Will. When he heard about this, he was getting stressed. He was gripping his microphone, and it sounded like a musical to him as far as he cared. He did not want this to happen. Now, I was like, Mr. Beast kind of did it, and that was the conversation on Twitter. People were like, well, he's going to get tagged because he did a, a Squid Game in real life clone. Mm -hmm. uh, but some are saying it's missing the point. Some are saying... Wait a sec, these people are in the game, they're dying. Like, there's dire consequences. Mm -hmm. But in a game show just for a cash prize and you just to uh, go back to the hotel if you get booted, it seems a bit different. So they got to find creative ways to make sure that you're invested in these characters and, and somehow find a way to m make it painful without actual physical pain. I mean, it's always painful to lose the contest, but they're going to have to do a bit better. I don't know. I don't have the ideas here, but some people are mad. Mm -hmm. uh, however, they seem to have the blessing here of the maker. Obviously, you're using the, the name Squid Game. They're going to do a season two, which was also announced recently. Mm -hmm. And I don't know which one is going to be promoting the other. Like, They put out this announcement video. I guess they're just trying to expand the Squid Game a universe and they claim it's going to be the biggest competition biggest reality series ever mm -hmm. over four million dollar cash prize uh go ahead will i mean you obviously the floor is yours i don't you want to vent a little bit no i mean <laughs> i uh i would like to know the premise of this because i think it's the complete opposite of what squid game represents but um I'll keep an open mind. I don't really have a lot to say about this. This is so different from what you said when you and I were talking off air. <laughs> no. All of a sudden, maybe, where the, no, cameras no, are, the cameras are rolling, and Will's like, I'll reserve judgment. <laughs> Meanwhile, before we roll, he says, you basically said you're pissed. I'm not pissed. I would like to see more of it. Let's just say No, that. I just want you to let the people know I'm not inventing something. What did you say well, prior to us... Uh, talking about it on air. Um, 
Listen, this whole thing is complicated. I think um, what Mr. Beast did was interesting, but he also got some flack too, right? By like the purists of Squid Game um, mm -hmm. enthusiasts. Right. Um, saying that, you know, he doesn't really know the premise of, of what it represents. Um, and maybe Netflix too. Um, I'm curious. I don't know. I'll just hold my judgment for now. He refuses and to say. Pissed. He refuses to say what he said. But anyway, I'll just have to tell you what he said. He okay. He, why don't you tell? He, me well, that. he. I mean, he basically said, like a lot of other com uh, commenters, that it's missing the point of the show, and he actually sort of wishes that it was left as one season. That's how how much he enjoyed it. How much he. Felt. Oh yeah, I forgot that part. I I agree. I think it should be one season. <laughs> you just had to get him going. Yeah, you just had to get him going. That's and all. another thing. <laughs> yeah, exactly. He's like, and what did I say next, Lou? And I'm like, well, what you said was. And he's like, yeah. Just paraphrase what you what I said to you. Yeah. Um, well, anyway, he he was he was very against it at first. It seems like that may have changed ever so slightly. I don't know. You guys, let me know what you think. Is this uh, is this what I know? It's going to be wildly successful because Squid Game is wildly successful, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. people are going to watch whatever it is with that name on it. And people watched Mr. Beast's reality uh, video mm -hmm. uh, in the similar fashion, and they're definitely going to watch this series. And I think I'm curious to see how Netflix tackles it. But, yeah. But I didn't, for the record, I did not watch the show. So take that for whatever you want. Mm -hmm. Uh, BTS label says groups plan to work on solo projects is not a hiatus. Ooh. Salacious. Ooh, we better, we better squash those rumors real quick. No details about future BTS collaborations or solo projects were announced Tuesday. I mean, how can they not do solo projects here and there? So they many should. guys. It's 40 guys over there. <laughs> it is a lot. Can they really do everything together? <laughs> I mean, I can barely hang out with you two. <laughs> There's 40 guys. Yeah, they must break out. They must find each other so annoying <laughs> at some point. And like, we don't like, they got to do, they're a package deal on everything. And I, mm -hmm. listen, it's not impossible, right? You can, you can do it. It's possible that they're all best of friends. And But for such a long period of time. It's, it's impressive, to be honest. It's, hard. Yeah. it's somewhat impressive, to be honest, because uh, you've seen so many bands and groups and, and uh, a breakup, essentially. Like, yeah. well, who, who's the guy doing all the stuff right now? Mm. Uh, Harry the, Styles. Yes. Yeah. He came from one. He came from a group. Yeah. Did and he really? What? Which? Uh, one Direction. One Direction. <laughs> oh, really? I don't listen to Harry Styles at all. Oh, you're sleeping on that. Well, I mean, He's you don't have to good. get so angry about it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> he went. Um, uh, Will went. I don't listen to Harry Styles at all. <laughs> He couldn't just say, I don't listen to him. He had to say, but, at all. But it comes with, like, his character, you know? Like, you have to know Harry Styles after yeah. you know his music. It's a whole package. Right. What but I, it's not I, just I, don't, I don't know what that means, Will. Like, he's, like, he's not just a... Um, like, a Harry Styles fan doesn't just listen to It's not just about music. the music. Yeah. It's like... That. You follow him, you know about... Wasn't that any artist? Um, like I listen to Kid Cudi and I like Kid Cudi, but I I don't know what he's up to, or nor do I care really. Mm -hmm. But you know what Harry Styles is up to? Yeah, he dropped an album recently. But he just seems to be like so into like pop culture, like he collaborates and he's, he's on like, the cover of magazines and stuff like shows that. And everything. So you're saying he has a good agent? <laughs> a great agent, sure, actually, yeah. <laughs> better than the other four. <laughs> <laughs> or either he has a great agent or he's really open to promotion. He's open to promoting himself. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Yeah. Does that feel uncomfortable? <laughs> no. No. Why would, why would I feel uncomfortable? About that well, well, I just mean that when I said it, the mood changed in here. Oh, right. No, right. no. Because no. you, I think the average person likes to perceive that the person is not promoting themselves, but they're just living but, yeah. like a, a, a really cool life. This but in reality, these different engagements don't just pop up. An agent calls him and says, I got a great mm -hmm. opportunity. You're trying to yeah. sell your record. You're going to go on this show. You're going to talk to this person. You're going to take a photo over here. Like, that's how this stuff works right yeah he's just everywhere and i i don't pay attention but i know he's everywhere that's what it is okay oh man that's great i don't listen to him at all 
<laughs> I know that's that. Well, that was the key part right there. But anyways, I'm just saying. Well, I it, feel like I'm missing out because he's just everywhere. That's the thing. I would say you're missing out, but I'm a so, fan of his music. So no, I would say you're lying and you meant something else. <laughs> Uh, but anyways, it, when it comes to any of these big groups that have been together for a really long time, it's in, the longer they stay together, the more impressive it is to me because of the potential for creative differences or mm -hmm. like everybody's doing well, everybody's making money, everybody you can kind of, the flexibility opens up and also touring and traveling the world and doing promotions and so forth. It can be pretty draining experience mm -hmm. from from what I can tell as an outsider looking in. Uh, and you just, everybody has to have equivalent or at least a certain level of stamina for that mm -hmm. across the board. You got to go to, you can't have one guy drop out. One guy can't say, uh, right. So it's pretty, it's pretty amazing from that standpoint. But anyway, apparent, I guess they're thinking about doing, uh, solo projects and obviously that would be a controversial topic. Typically when a brand, a band breaks up and one person becomes solo or they, they go solo typically only one really becomes popular is that right i don't i'm just thinking yeah. like uh, justin timberlake and um harry styles those are the first two that came to my mind beyonce beyonce like i mean everybody else is i mean they're they're definitely not left in the dust no uh, i think i don't know kelly Rowland is popular so. yeah or i mean like if you go further back like the beatles or something paul mccartney and john mm -hmm. lennon and right okay yeah, yeah. i don't know it right. depends it, it, it's, a, it's a case by case basis i think some people in these groups actually want to quiet things down a little bit yes sure. and yes. others want to keep going mm -hmm. and so inevitably when if there is a split up or if there is if there are solo projects some are going to be more into it than yeah. others who are looking to relax Take a little a bit seat. for a bit yeah and and they can if they want japan makes online insults punishable by one year in prison in wake of reality tv star's death whoa how about that headline whoa one year uh but also i'm i'm assuming this uh, reality star took their own life is that what's going on japan's yes. parliament on monday passed legislation making online insults punishable by imprisonment amid rising public concern over cyber bullying sparked by the suicide of a reality television star who had faced social media abuse under the amendment the country's penal code set to take effect later this summer offenders convicted of online insults can be jailed for up to one year or fined three hundred thousand yen which is uh, two thousand two hundred dollars a significant increase from the existing punishments of detention for fewer than 30 days and a fine of $75. So it doesn't mean everybody who is convicted of this is going to get the same punishment. They're saying this is the maximum, depending on the circumstance mm -hmm. and the situation. The bill proved to be controversial in the country with opponents arguing it could impede free speech and criticism of those in power. However, supporters said the tougher legislation was needed to crack down on cyberbullying and online harassment. It was only passed after... A provision was added ordering the law be re-examined three years after it goes into effect to gauge its impact on freedom of expression. So they can check. They're like, hey, this is really too much. And then I guess they could get rid of it in three years. Well, anyway, that's in the da in the, the bill or the new legislation, new law, whatever. The death, on the other hand, that's ha Hannah Kimura. And she was 22, known for her role in the Netflix show Terrace House. Uh, She's then, also a wrestler. Oh, okay. Yeah. Was the was the show about wrestling or no? No, I think it's just a reality show. Other oh. cast members came forward to share their own experiences of online abuse. Soon after her death, top Japanese officials addressed the danger of cyberbullying. Kimura's mother, former professional wrestler Kyoko Kimura, Kimura Campaign for stronger anti-cyberbullying laws. I want people to know that cyberbullying is a crime. Wow. Well, tough, tough subject, right? It's a, uh, another one where y you got to analyze that on a like fine tooth comb, try to figure out on each case, like how severe each individual word is. Or does it have to do with how persistent a particular person is? Like at where it crosses over into harassment? Is it like a certain number of messages, a certain type of message? 
a certain word, a certain type of mm -hmm. language, like very difficult. Very, very difficult. Yeah, it gets really messy. Very, very difficult. Especially if there's like hundreds or thousands of people that's just bullying one person. Like how do you right, shuffle who, through that? Very difficult. And find people. Very so, difficult. Yeah. Uh, here we have an emergency braking system on a Volvo truck. Oh, ba oh my. Oh, oh. oh my. So uh, we have actually a, a oh compilation of emergency braking yeah. on a big rig trucks made by Volvo, obviously. And I don't know, are these, some of these look like tests, whereas others, right. this, is, this is a test showcasing how well it works. It's pretty amazing. Yeah, I was very impressed. But There's this no one, oh my text. God, it's just... It is flying too. <sighs> and the, the person what was running. That? What was that, Mo? That's, doesn't that make your heart skip a beat? Was that a... <sighs> Oh. Oh. A couple of guys talking about love. That's right. Um, <laughs> the first clip is just nutty. There's kids running across the street. It's yeah. a, it's definitely a real recording. They're blurred out, and the truck oh. somehow manages an auto stop. You notice how like the tip of the front of the truck really starts to oh, yeah, yeah, lean yeah. forward. Oh yeah, it's slamming. Those brakes are slamming. And if I'm that driver, I am like. <sighs> Yeah. Or if I'm the kid, or, or everybody, and, 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 and if I'm anybody involved, <laughs> mm -hmm. that is as close as you can possibly get to death. Hey, wait a second. We'll go back a bit. Hmm. Right here. Look at that. It's not a real. No, that's no, a no, test. No, yeah. That's from a test. They, why would they smash a car if they don't I have see, to? It's an inflatable car to mimic an actual car. But these systems have come a long way, and everybody talks mm. about EVs and stuff and self-driving, but the truth is a lot of cars have gotten better at this, and mm -hmm. trucks and big rigs, and these systems that are in place now, I I'm positive this life's been saved, mm -hmm. and that's an amazing thing. Here we have a warehouse robot that can climb shelves. That's lovely. Look at this. Oh, his name is Squid as well. How does he? Woo! Whoa. Let's go! Oh, so there's like rails on the side of the mm -hmm. shelving units. Yep. And, and he's, he's wait, how little, is he grabbing? Got it? a little platform, got a little arm, <clears throat> grabs the box. Yeah. I like this. This seems really efficient and helpful. Goes across. I noticed they don't have the tracks all the way across. I oh, know they do. Hmm. Scans some sort of code, knows he's got the right box, brings it back to the right location. This is the future. That's fun. This is the future. Don't mind that. It's both fun and terrifying. Yeah. Yes, as usual, mm -hmm. as is the case with anything cool. Here is a young bird thinking food will automatically jump to their mouth since their mothers feed them like that. You might like this one, Mo. <laughs> oh. They like, ha give me. <laughs> haven't learned yet that they've got to go I'm get like, it. How long does he do this for? <laughs> Until he's like, it okay, doesn't I'm just go picking. in my mouth on its own. <laughs> Yeah. Like yelling at just the worm. screaming at it. Yeah. yeah, that's pretty good. Well, this is there's you know there's a lesson in here, right? Uh. If you do too much for people that that, that mm -hmm. they never learn to do it on their own. There's, I think there's a lot of people walking around the earth right now with their mouth open. Whoa, oh. way to be heavy. Dude. That was deep. <laughs> <laughs> that's so deep. <laughs> oh man. Um. You actually might like this. Oh, clip. dude, I have actually seen this. I don't want to yeah. ruin it, but this is one of the best camera works I've seen in a long time. This is crazy. Perfect recovery. Is this from these playoffs right now? Is this recent? Uh, or is this an old clip be. that resurfaced? Steph Curry's in it. Well, yeah, but he's been around for a bit. Oh, no, yeah, they're playing. But look the at Suns. the tracking here. Yeah. Like, you, I can't even keep an eye on the ball. Yeah, Whoa, was, get out of here. It was good. And amazing. Then, then he has to come back and hit the... The uh, guy who shot the ball. Yeah, the face of the... He has to track the face of the uh, shooter in that case. Yeah, this is... Just, this, the, just the ball. I've seen this clip, and it's impressive. You, you, There are some things that humans are good at, mm -hmm. and this would be hard to replicate with some sort of automated Ooh. system because his flow is sick. Well done. Well done, dude. His flow is sick, and his understanding of the game. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm where and when to be and at what pace because he changes his tracking pace yeah yeah at I, certain moments because he knows a shot's about to come right around uh here when he 
zips around. I actually lose the ball here. I had no idea that it's over there. Right there. You see that? Yeah. Man, yeah. that's crazy. Bang well and done. zoom. And he zooms as he pans. Mm -hmm. Lovely stuff. Well done. Good. Yeah. Good. 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 Uh, be home before dark. Why honey and bumblebees can't fly at night. Did you know that? I mean, I, I've never seen them at night, but I didn't know that there was a rule on that one. So this is a really short clip. It went viral. And basically, you have like a cube and there's honeybees in there and it has light. And all of a sudden, this guy turns off the light and then they just all drop. Damn. You're right. I've never seen this before. But they're still alive. Like they're just waddling around. Yeah. They don't try to glide. They don't come down slowly. They just drop. Bam. Wait, sorry. Why, why do they do this? Um, because apparently they just need to find pollen. That's why they fly and travel. Okay. But without the sun to direct them, it's, uh, oh, it's, they don't feel the need to. Got it. That makes sense. Why am I flying right now? Yeah. Like they usually just stay at home. I think it could be a defense <laughs> mechanism, night. right? If you're, if they're flying at night, they're, they might be an easy catch for like a bat or something. Maybe. Right. Yeah. I didn't think about that. <laughs> <laughs> but have you because ever... there's other there's other animals that use different nav <laughs> all right <laughs> i'm serious yeah yeah but I don't but know. it got me thinking like i've never seen a bumblebee fly at night no no so june bugs though oh yeah remember june bugs saw one the other day P pepper is obsessed with june bugs if she sees a june bug she wants to figure out what's going on every time yeah all right, last one. In Romania, 20 squats will get you a free bus ticket. Disabled and elderly people get to ride for free. That's kind of nice. Mm -hmm. This is true? Wow. I think this is uh, the system here. Yeah, it's tracking. It's like a kiosk. You have to stand between two lines. There's some sort of tracking taking place, so they know that you've actually executed. I'm sure plenty of people try to cheat it. But, uh, yeah. You're squatting, you're getting bus tickets. They're trying to encourage your physical behavior. Yeah. They're trying to uh, have the healthy population and save the money on the health care. So they're like, this is better. I wouldn't mind doing this. You save when two, was, like, you save two bucks right now. Yeah. Do the squats. We save two bucks later. Mm -hmm. I wonder how it detects mm -hmm. you from doing more. You get like a lifetime supply of bus tickets or something. Yeah, yeah. Like there's a, a maximum a maximum number of times. Yeah. I don't even know if there's an advantage to that because no, the bus ticket is probably dated. Like that's it. You just get one for right, right yeah. then and there, and that's that's the end of it. It has a code on it or whatever else. But yeah, I don't know. It's pretty cool. It's fun. I, 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 there's probably somebody who's pissed off at it, but. <laughs> I mean, that's just in general that's the case with anything but I mean they gave elderly people and disabled people the free ticket but yeah. there's probably some other group that's just like I'm fat and I want to be and don't make me squat I should, I should you know like when you do a contest and they say no purchase necessary mm. <laughs> yeah there might be like a no purchase necessary version of this but the no purchase necessary is always so much harder Do you get what I mean? Like you have to legitimately write. You just gonna, you just gonna end the show on me like that. Okay. What? <laughs> <laughs> what are you gonna, what are you gonna say? No, like gonna... uh, the. <laughs> Lou, what's going on? <laughs> Why are you looking at Will, and then back at me? I think um, because I leave the song off like abruptly, I just stop it. It right. goes insane. <laughs> right. That's how it goes. So I'm just going to okay. start it up again, and then it's going to be okay. All right. <laughs> and there we have. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in to Lou later. Thank you to the chat. Thank you to everybody who gave Super Chats. We've lost Lou today, but we'll be back again tomorrow. <laughs> Thank you, guys. We appreciate it. Take care.